Hello everyone and welcome to this course in Rag Rageshri. So just giving a brief overview of the Rag and you'll be learning a composition in Rupak, which is a seven beat cycle. So at the moment I would just encourage you to absorb the sound of the melody and just try to get the melody into your head. Don't try to think too much actually about the nature of it being seven beats. At the moment try to just focus on the sound and nature of the melody as much as possible and then it will actually become a bit more clear and comfortable how it works in seven beats once you've just absorbed it as if it's in your head as just a song that you know and that you're comfortable with that melody. So a bit later on we will look a bit more at Rupak and how that really works but just try to listen to it and focus on the uh, the melodic characteristics of the rag as much as possible. So. It's a beautiful rag that has a lot in common with Bageshri, which is one that we've looked at in the past. Um, and the principal notes are that Sa and Ma are in the drone. So, so Ma is a very prominent note, and Da is generally where we start the ascent from. So Ma and Da are very strong notes, um, and we skip Pa on the way up, skipping yeah, skipping Re and skipping uh, Pa on the way up. Um, but in Rageshri we tend not to use pa at all, so it's more of a sep um, hexatonic rag, which is six notes. So let's have a look at it. We're starting from da, and then kormal ni and sa. So if you know Bageshri, this is sounds just like Bageshri to begin with. Da, kormal ni, sa. Um, but then instead of having a kormal gar like we do in Bageshri, we have a should ga and there's the ma. So da ni sa ga ma. So it's got a brighter character to it. And ga is often a note that some landed on and given a lot of focus as well. It, it's not seen as the, the, the Vardi note is, is that ma, but ga is definitely a very um, articulated note. So, and you can play, you can play re but on the way down. Often a little kind of, um, that kind of motion between sa and re gives it a nice character. And moving on from ga and ma, we have up to that da, and da holds a lot of focus as well. And then we have the Cornwall knee, just like we did in that low octave, and then there's the sa. So just going straight through, we have da, Cornwall knee, sa, ga, ma, and then the da, Cornwall knee, sa again. So da, ni, sa, ga, ma, da, ni, sa. And coming down, sa, ni, da, so there's just no pa at all. Sa ni da ma ga re sa. So the only difference on the way down is that you can include re.
to start one of these courses, you can buy them individually or you can subscribe monthly to access all of them. For subscribers, there'll be new content every month, including live streams where we can answer your personal questions and go into more detail about applying this material. So far, we've covered Rag Yaman, Rag Bageshri, Jog, Hamsadwani, Kathy, and Rag Malkons, and there's much more to come. This body of work is a culmination of the 18 years experience I have as a guitar teacher, combined with the knowledge acquired through studying the sitar directly, and then adapting that material using the guitar techniques that suit this style best. To create these courses and gather the most authentic material possible, I work closely with other Indian classical musicians, such as Manish Pingale and Gurdang Riot. I'd like to give a special thanks to my guru Rupa Panesar, who has guided me in the creation of these courses. Much of the material has been adapted directly from my training with her. Also Shakya Khan, my guru, who's been inspiring me immensely and continues to shape how I approach the instrument and this incredible world of Indian classical music. So come and join us at the Indian Classical Guitar Academy to start this journey. The first 50 subscribers will get a reduced price every month for the whole duration of their membership. So come and be one of the first guitar players to realize what it means to be an Indian classical musician.